to get off the Xanax. I had to get off the Percocet. I had to get off the codeine. I had to quit the Promethazine. I had to get out the projects. I had to put down the Molly X. I had to get up and get a check. I had to earn me some respect. I had to get off the Xanax. I had to get off the Percocet. If you will come around me and allow me to fuck you, you don't know me. All you know, I'm NBA young boy. Ah, yeah. Like, you don't know shit about nothing. This is nothing ass bitch. And if I was a road manager, I would tell us, like, keep a bitch around. Keep two hoes around. Hey, man, tough this. Where it is, whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're gonna be the dope hoe and you're gonna be the bullet hoe. So, in case anything happen and y'all can interchange, you'll be the one who goddamn, uh, like, nigga, if it's danger, you jump the fuck up and take the bullet and you'll goddamn take the goddamn dope charge. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not a more, I mean, the fuck, why not? It's a nothing ass bitch, no way. If you will allow yourself willingly, knowingly, to contract a STD, you're a nothing, just for clout and motherfucking, you're a nothing ass bitch, period. They ain't got to respect you. So I think that was a good look for that hoe to get shot instead of NBA Youngboy getting shot. Did you know that becoming a rapper is the number one cause of death amongst young black men? Have you ever wondered why the incarceration and murder of rappers is so accepted and somewhat celebrated amongst today's society. Today, we're going to explore an example of this phenomenon. Welcome to The Rap Trap, hosted by Ayo Conseco. I think that before we get started, I said, I had a list. I had a list a little while back. It was in 2018, I believe. Um, I said rappers that will die in 2019. And it was three motherfuckers. It was three motherfuckers. And Takashi and NBA Youngboy was on the list. I don't know who the third motherfucker was. But it's looking like I, I guess I saw something was gonna happen to him and I was I was taking it as death. And maybe in a way it is like dying when you can't move around like you want to. Ain't that what death is? You know what I'm saying? The end of movement and shit like that, I guess it's a death in a way. But of course I mean they were actually gonna die and shit like that, but when you look at it, but Takashi he ain't he ain't dead at all, but shit did happen in 2019. So I think that shit is kinda crazy. Um, but you know what it is, uh, welcome back to the Rap Trap, I'm A.O. Conseco, fearless leader of A.O. Nation and the Men 2 Movement. This is, in hindsight, um, as you already know, niggas tried to murk NBA young boy, um, they were unsuccessful, they hit the bitch that was with them, and I think we got a misunderstanding, um, y'all motherfuckers, Y'all are watching the videos, you're watching the Rap Trap, you're watching the Stupid Rappers, you're watching the Big Facts Podcast, and I'm telling you about shit that's going on and, and how fucked up it is and how um, the rap game has turned into a fucking blood sport, the rap arena in itself. Um, you have to go through a fucking gauntlet. Uh, keep your eyes on the baby. Keep your eyes on the baby. Um, and stun up for Vegas. Um, it's just a matter of time. And it's, and it's not even so much... Dog, it, it, this shit is... It's inevitable. But what I was getting at is... You motherfuckers that are around these artists... For some reason, you're believing that you're in a safe zone because it's not you that's on the stage. My nigga... Anything... Anything around these motherfuckers is in danger. You know what I'm saying? This this is, I don't want to say devil. This energy that is around is not just, you know, energy is contagious. Probably the most contagious thing that there is. Somebody come up to you, they, ah, they mad as fuck. That shit immediately comes on to you. What happened? You know what I'm saying? 
That's why you have to watch who you allow in your space because that energy will fuck up your whole day. And I'm sure you've had this happen where a motherfucker, like you don't know what the fuck happened, but as soon as you dap this motherfucker off and they left, now you just got a fucked up at like your, your energy is all fucked up now and this is what the shit is. Um, I suggest everyone that's in a situation that they cannot control to leave that fucking situation. This is why the second S is so fucking important. That solitude shit. You control everything that's going on around you. You understand? When you fucking with NBA Youngboy, no matter if you're the security guard, the bitch, the hype man, no matter what fucking the manager, the, whole, you know, the, the fucking bus driver, it don't matter who the fuck you are, but you are now in his shit. He runs this shit. I'm, I'm, but I'm, I'm kind of, I, I, I can't help but be confused because, like, is this the, the Mandela effect? Like, don't this nigga got fucking herpes? Or am I, or am I thinking that, am I giving you nothing ass bitches too much credit? Yeah, that's what the fuck it is. But let's, let's, I want I to I play with that for a minute. There's niggas in the hood that motherfuckers know that they have herpes, but they don't have money. I, do I even have to ask that question? Like, is it the money? Is it the fame? Fucking right it is. Fucking right it is. That's all it is. I just... So, bitch, you a nothing ass bitch, and he was smart for keeping you as a fucking bullet sponge. You keep these motherfuckers around and what they're supposed to do is serve as a fucking charge sponge. Meaning that with the, the situation with J.D. Youngin, this nigga locked up, he ain't nothing but a fucking junkie. This the nigga who was on Vlad fucking scratching and shit all fucked up. Kodak Black just got hit, but he didn't get hit again. They, I think the feds picked this case up and shit like that. But in both those situations, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jay Young got hit on a dope case and shit like that. But it's like in both them fucking cases, like motherfuckers are supposed to take these fucking charges. If you're not gonna take the fucking, like, if you're not gonna take some of this stress off my back from being this nigga that's in the spot, like you know everybody wanna fuck me over, everybody wanna see me fall. If you're not gonna take some of this goddamn pressure off, what the fuck is you around for? And I, what what better filtering what better filtering system than for a nigga to have herpes to find out whether or not a bitch is a nothing ass bitch? Obviously, you're a nothing ass bitch. Not just because you know what I'm saying maybe you know uh, the, the the media is giving me bad press. You know what I'm saying maybe I'm not as fucked up as they make me seem. Even though I get on IG live and talk for myself, so it's kind of hard for you for me to re miss represent myself even in anger you can still see exactly who i am i think anger brings out our purest form that's exactly who we are that's why i say you need to know what a person look like when they get mad and shit like that who they turn into is really who the fuck they are everything before that everything other than that that mad form is just a fucking front it's just fluff i call it fluff it's it's a front that's not really who they are um, uh, but if you will come around me and allow me to fuck you, you don't know me. All you know, I'm NBA young boy. Ah, yeah. Like, you don't know shit about nothing. This is nothing ass bitch. And if I was a road manager, I would tell you, like, keep a bitch around. Keep two hoes around. Hey, man, tuck this. Wear this. Whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're going to be the dope hoe and you're going to be the bullet hoe. So in case anything happen, y'all can interchange. You'll be the one who goddamn, uh, like nigga, if it's danger, you jump the fuck up and take the bullet and you'll goddamn take the goddamn dope charge. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not a more, I mean, the fuck? Why not? It's a nothing ass bitch. No way. If you will allow yourself willingly, knowingly, to contract a STD, you're a nothing, just for clout and motherfucking, you're a nothing ass bitch. Period. They ain't got to respect you. So I think that was a good look for that hoe to get shot instead of NBA Youngboy getting shot. 
Because that hoe don't matter where the fuck, no way. I'm talking about like, that's, if you in the street and you gotta be in the street, them the type of people that you search out, like you look for them motherfuckers that ain't got shit to live for, they gonna crash out any fucking way. Nigga shit, at least get you some money and some clout before, you know what I'm saying? Like you gonna fuck up anyway. You might well fuck up for, you know what I'm saying? For some real shit. So, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have no motherfucking, uh, I don't have no um, pity for that hoe. Um, but I do want motherfuckers to understand that when you stand around stupid shit, stupid shit is gonna happen. Like stupid shit will take place. There, there's no way that you can avoid it. Stupid shit is gonna take place, especially when you're in this type of situation where it's kind of obvious. It's constant chaos. It's constant fucking chaos. And it's and, and like, are you thinking? I, and I'm talking to the motherfuckers that are around these rap niggas. Watching this retarded ass shit go on. Are you thinking that uh, I, think I, I gotta do what I gotta do? God damn, it's hiding this motherfucker. Hold on. But you thinking that I gotta go through this to get, I have to go through something to get to where I wanna be at. Um, you gotta do what you gotta do type shit. But like, you going to these hotels, whatever, and like you seeing what's going on, you not liking what's going on, but you still staying with the shit, and that's when you gotta act like, why are you still staying with this shit? Like, you're not guaranteed any money, like you you getting bird fed, you know what I'm saying? Anytime nigga do throw you something, it's on some nigga high or some shit like that, and you damn near gotta beg for it, but I guess you just can't see it, you know what I'm saying? And then you'll be the next motherfucker to come out saying, oh man, oh, oh that a whole time, whole ass nigga, and you're coming all that bullshit, but you just letting this shit fest and fest and fest, and that's why a lot of times the nigga that will bust a nigga brain will be the nigga on the inside. Um, but what I saw in this whole thing was you run up on so many niggas. This whole and it's the rap trap. That's all it really is. The reason why Kodak Black and NBA Youngboy and niggas like them and fucking um, what the other nigga name JD Young and them niggas the reason why this new generation loves them is because unruly fuck authority always ah you know what I'm saying like even if they doing it online it's ah and then you know uh, uh, it, uh, it, uh, like this just posturing like they really that for real you know what I'm saying and Niggas, they not looking at how you got this big ass security guard here, you got 30 niggas here, and all this shit. Like, nobody's looking at that. They looking at the fact that, oh, yeah, him all, oh, yeah, he ain't going for that shit. And you love that shit. But also in the back of your mind, the artist knows if I ever, you know what I'm saying, take the high road, it's over with. The headlines are going to be. NBA young boy punk die, go that black, get slapped down and all that shit like this. And you can't have that career suicide. But you gotta ask yourself, what game, what game am I playing to where I can't use my mind? You know what I'm saying? Where I have to be an animal. I have to be retarded and able, to, like what game is this? That should be the question. What game am I in where it's, I lose if I think. If I use my mind, I lose this game. But you're in it. You're in it. And you probably done fucked up in this fucked up ass deal. You done let these white folks sign you to whatever the fuck they sign you to. It's, it's no telling what kind of money, you know what I'm saying, like you even have right now. And I think that's another thing that, that caused a lot of shit. Like, NBA Youngboy, there's no question about it. In five years, it, it's, you know, but you, I, I don't know if I can really say that. I don't know if I can, niggas, this generation is fucking with NBA Youngboy so hard. NBA Youngboy may be 
the I'm not gonna say Tupac. I could say Tupac, but I'll say um Ja Rule. Ja Rule of of this era to where even years later, you know what I'm saying, you can have a millennium tour or some shit like that and you bring out all the oldies. You know what I'm saying? When you hear NBA Young Boy, you love that shit. You know what I mean? But I, I think that's really that's a very scary idea that parents are gonna be telling their kids, fuck that bullshit you listening to, this that real shit. You know what I'm saying? I think that's extremely scary. Um, and we're gonna be in trouble by that time too. And that's why I, I, it comes into play when I tell you that we're gonna have to go to war with our children type shit. But in this situation, you didn't you didn't pumped up at so many niggas. And I'm gonna get to the, the part about how This shit is supposed to happen. You're supposed to get killed on road. Like, you're supposed to die at home, but only because you scared to go on the road. You scared to be at home, you scared to be on the road, so the only option is to go broke. The only option is to go broke. I'll get to that in a minute though. Um, You done puffed up at so many niggas in so many places on this ha-ha shit that you've gotten used to it. Also, you know that there's always a camera. There's always somebody looking and shit like that. So in every situation, it could have started out so cool. It could have started... Dog, I'm telling you, going outside is dangerous as fuck nowadays. You know, I'm outside with, I'm outside with this shit. I'm trying to tell you, my nigga, it's, it's, it's a new world. Going outside means you outside meaning that you at these fucking events, you at the club, you at the block party, you at that party. What like it's you pretty much just waiting until your your ticket get pulled. Innocent bystanders get hit and shit. You just really gambling every time you go out. And for what reason? I'm outside bragging to a whole bunch of people who want to see you dead anyway. But we'll get to that in a minute. You in your car at Rolling Loud? traffic jam or whatever the fuck. Oh, whatever the fuck it is. You walking out your hotel. But let's say you in the car. Because everybody got shot in the car, I'm guessing. They did get shot in the car. Um, or maybe they didn't get shot in the car. Let's say they in the car though. In the car, whatever. And somebody, you know, you thinking it's just another fan because you've gotten um, acclimated to people Always when they see you they go crazy and shit like that. So you think it's another fan get in the car Everybody getting situated. They can tell it is somebody important because you got a whole motherfucking convoy with you A uh, whole entourage and shit like that. Oh who that is? Oh who the fuck and just Because you there and we've all been you know as niggas in the street We've all been at that point to where you know you might just be Rolling high or whatever the fuck like that and just you just own that shit to whatever you see whatever you see The, the whole ply situation when ply got slammed off stage The nigga that slammed him was his fan He was his fan so I'm guessing that he whatever happened with that ply he, he applied that the nigga and the nigga whatever the fuck He felt played because he was drunk and hot Ply didn't play that nigga the nigga just felt fucking violated for whatever fucking reason. And that's what happens when you tear down your spiritual force field. And that means you high and drunk and shit like that. You've tore down your spiritual force field. And that's... Now everything that came inside of you to where you're not thinking anymore. And you understand that this is true because you do drugs. And you know that you don't think the same way when you high as when you sober. You're not as confrontational listen to me you're not as confrontational or it might be backwards your mind might have been fucked up i was going to say you're not as confrontational when you're sober as when you're i'll say this you don't have as much fake courage sober as you do i say fake courage not real courage real courage does not come off of when you're under the influence real courage is real courage you have it every all the time you don't have as much fake courage when you're sober as when you're high. When you're high, you feel invincible because you're in your zone. You, you know what I'm saying? You own that. 
But when you sober, you just you just want to be left alone. You don't feel like yourself no more. And that's how you know that you're a fucking addict and you need to seek help. Nigga high, nigga drunk, whatever like that. So you see them all and then you got the, you know, you probably ain't got no real money. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't got no real money because if you had real money, you wouldn't be trying to cause no type of attention that you're going to burn no nigga because you know you got too much going for yourself. So you broke, but you got the dope. Nothing really going for yourself. Who the fuck that is? Hey, young boy. Oh, what up, nigga? Shit. What up? Oh, nigga, I know you ain't acting funny. Nigga might not. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's up with this nigga? So you give a nigga a look or whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? Oh, you might you might try this nigga like you tried everybody else. And that nigga just went on that shit. Oh, fuck, nigga, I got it. And it's over with. Just like that. And every artist is one fan away from that situation happening. One fucking fan away. How long are you gonna survive in this fucking wilderness? By this time, we all understand that the rap trap is not a fucking theory that I like it's it's not just something that I made up in my head and shit like that. It's a actual real fucking thing. And no fucking rapper is exempt as we just saw. It's not just the young dumb niggas, it's also the niggas doing good. That's like, you, you don't hear about um, Yo Gotti and, and Rick Ross in these situations. Niggas move different. You understand? They move a whole lot different. Because they're not trying to pull in the young crowd. But if you're actually trying to... If you're trying to come in a game through that door and you African American, you have to do that shit. Tech and Maine. Um, what's what's the little dude's name, man? Um These niggas from New York, these drill rappers from New York, like you really have to be on it. I'm gonna drop a um uh I probably already dropped the shit. Um Teflon Mark. These niggas is real deal trying to prove that they are the hardest of the hard, the most gangster of the gangster. And it's just, that's what you gotta do. It's what gotta happen. For people who don't know you, for the new rap fans to say that you really about what it is you talking about, like you really don't have no choice but to do that. You have no fucking choice. The only choice you have is to not come through that door. And to not come through that gangster door, it means that you come in on some, you know what I'm saying, some Drake type shit from the jump. Or some positive shit from the jump. And you understand that that market is a lot slower than that trap market. That trap market, you know what I'm saying, it's a dangerous fucking door to come through. But if you're trying to get some money, you know what I'm saying, if you're a dead devil, you can make it through that door. You won't make it far, you'll get in the door, and then you'll get hit with this charge, that charge, this charge, that charge, and then you end up getting killed. And then they on to the next one. The fans, these fans, you have to understand, like you have to understand, these fans, being that they'll put you in these situations and they want you to take your brain out and just kick that bitch down the street, they can't be real fans. Real fans is, hey, you know, don't do that. We love you type shit. Not, you know what I'm saying? They don't want you to jump in the body. God damn. They don't want you to, you know what I'm saying, fuck yourself over and shit like that. They'll try to actually stand with you and that's not what's going on today what's going on today is motherfuckers want to see death and destruction and, and they crave fucking blood this is i'm telling you like this shit is truly and that's why you look retarded trying to do this shit as a 28 30 year old you know what i'm saying because this shit is truly for the fucking kids 
It's for the kids who don't have a mind to know, nah, I ain't doing that shit. It's for them. It's for the children. Because they don't know better. You can't be over 25 and still make these kind of mistakes. Um, so so that, that's what the fuck that is. Now, let's talk about this dynamic of being out of town and having to get security. The whole security thing. How do you, can, how much does a life cost? Um, essentially what you're doing by hiring a bodyguard, you're buying someone's life. When I think bodyguard, I'm thinking of the president. I'm thinking secret service. Motherfuckers, they, they put their life up for yours. Um, how much does that cost? And can you buy that? Uh, uh, I, Teflon Mark and Booster said the same thing. I don't want. I ain't gonna buy security because they they don't know my family. They ain't gonna ride for me like um, my family rides me. They know my family and shit like that. As if family don't. As if Booster's brother ain't fucking rob them. You know what I'm saying? We understand that it's always gonna be the motherfucker that know you that's gonna try to fuck you over. Honestly, I, I think I feel more comfortable with a stranger than with motherfuckers because it, it's just. And it, like, you know what it is? Motherfuckers is betting that the worst won't happen. Because most of the time, security never have to, you know what I'm saying, take their gun out and shit like that. It just usually, the you see the big ass niggas and shit like that, motherfuckers stand down. But what about now? What happened when that nigga started shooting? When that nigga started shooting that young boy, did the security guard step up? Gun drawn or did he take cover too? Because it's a human fucking reaction. You you hear gunshots to hit the floor. But as a security guard, you pose a step in front of your fucking client. But what I'm saying is, you go to Baton Rouge, talking about uh, young boy. You go to your hometown, whatever the fuck. Everybody there is from there so they feel comfortable, i.e. shitty cuz. Shitty cuz when they tried that if they was in New York somewhere, because you don't know the you don't know what's going on. No. No small minded street nigga. Not real street nigga, because a real street nigga is comfortable in the streets. Any street. As long as y'all you know what I'm saying, your loose cigarettes cost 50 cents. And you know what I'm saying? I can get me, you know what I'm saying, a Reggie Blunt for five dollars and a gas blunt go for twenty and shit like that, twenty gram type shit. I'm at home. It, this I know this. But for a small minded street nigga, he his world is as big as his fucking block is. Four corners, that's all he know. But in those four corners, he is anything come through this motherfucker, I got the right to check that shit. You understand? So you at home and you know that shit gonna happen to you. But then you go abroad and you can't even, like, you don't know exactly how to move. As you just saw with Kodak, you can't have a fire with you. Can't have a fire nowhere near you as we just saw with Boosie. Got hit with the gun in the car. They, they want you to be like naked out this motherfucker. And I think that's me thinking too much. I think that's because Mo a lot of police officers have security businesses. That's the e that's easy shit to do. Like, I'm a police officer. I already got my... You get a fucking certification, now you're a fucking bodyguard. You got a whole fucking business. Um, so I think they do that trying to make a motherfucker, force a motherfucker to get fucking security and shit like that. But they make sure that you're naked so that you can't return fire so we get the Nipsey hustle situation where... If there was a gun there, maybe, you know what I'm saying, shit could have happened different. But you disarm everybody, and now everybody's free to do whatever the fuck they want to do. Just like the schools and shit like that. Soft targets. You go abroad, you can't have five. You go home, you can't have five. Because everybody sees you. This is the rap trap. The rap trap, they want you to go in this motherfucker and just pretty much be running 
just with your bare hands, just be running. And if you're caught with the weapon that you need to protect yourself, which we see that you do need a weapon to protect yourself, you get hit because you're a felon. And you can't, you can't get a fucking record deal. You can't come through that trap door unless you're a felon. You see what I'm saying? Like how it seems like the motherfucking record labels like they set this shit up so that when you come in, take all your shield and all your fucking sword, and you just fighting a, a tiger with your bare hands because that's more entertaining. This is the rap trap. Trying to hide fucking security. Nobody give a fuck about no security. They can only react. They can only react, but this makes great fucking news. It would have made better news if NBA Youngboy got killed. They would have loved to hear that shit. Right? They would have had a vigil for two days and shit like that, and everybody back on their fucking mirror, goddamn. I think this Nipsey Hustle shit, man, I believe that this Nipsey Hustle shit should have woke everybody up to some shit like, I, I, I really need to focus on what I'm doing because nobody gives a fuck. As much as motherfuckers swear to God that they love Nipsey, nobody moved no inch on nothing with nothing. It wasn't too, like, not too much went on and everybody's back to their fucking business. Life goes on. So if you believe in that, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, But that's the dope though. That's the dope. Like, if you really thinking that you really just bigger than life. You're not seeing what actually is going on and that's another step of it. High, felon, exaggerated ego, because at the end of the day, every, no matter what the fuck the headline is, as long as the headline isn't NBA Youngboy gets punked out, NBA Youngboy gets shot at, NBA Youngboy gets arrested, NBA Youngboy gets shot, NBA Youngboy gets killed, no matter which one of those things happen, what's gonna naturally happen is them streams is gonna go up. So the label is not trying to make it easy for their artists. They're actually trying to make it hard. What's to say they don't actually send motherfuckers to do this shit?